What's up guys, it's Bass and Bros here today, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the wacky rig and why you should add it to one of your finesse baits, and why you should be throwing it a lot more if you aren't already. So, the main reason why I like the wacky rig so much is because it's weightless. And since it's weightless, it is able to attract more bass whenever it's going down the water because it's, you know, it's going down slower because it doesn't have any weight to it. And something about this just absolutely drives the bass crazy. And this is like one of the best baits that you can throw like pretty much all year round and get bites on pretty, pretty easily. It doesn't matter, you can be fishing for smallmouth, largemouth, or spots. The Wacky Rig is going to do you good. The Wacky Rig is good for finicky bass because it's just, it's something about it that just drives them absolutely crazy. I don't know what it is. I think it's just it being like an easy meal for them because it's not moving. It's not falling like super quick like a normal bait would. And it just, it just attracts the bass. And if you like pop your rod off the bottom or you can even let it sit there, you can float down in current. It's just, it's so versatile. It's just amazing for finicky bass, especially in the colder months. The Wacky Rig is a killer. But let's get into what type of tackle you guys need to use for the Wacky Rig. Also, what is your favorite finesse bait of all time? Because it's kind of hard for me to decide. Like, I, I like the Ned Rig and I like the Wacky Rig a lot. But they each have their different places for me. So let me know down below what exactly your favorite finesse rig is. So for rod length, guys, I like to use a 6 foot 6 to a 7 foot medium fast action and you want that fast action so you're able to detect the bites a lot more especially with like finesse baits and please use a spinning combo if you're going to be using the wacky rig because you will lose a lot of sensitivity if you're using this on a bait caster and you won't be able to skip it as well so that's what i like to use it personally i like to use a six foot six uh medium fast action that's just me it depends on the situation if you want to cast a little bit further go with the seven foot you'll be able to cast it a lot further than with a six foot six rod. So, also the type of uh, line you're gonna wanna use personally, I like to keep it light and I like to use eight pound fluorocarbon with mine. Now there is some people who like to just run straight braid and that's fine. Braid's ultimately more sensitive than fluorocarbon and it has less stretch compared to fluorocarbon so it makes it pretty good to use whenever you're using the wacky rig but it's pretty visible to the fish so with fluorocarbon it's pretty much invisible to the fish so some people will use a braid backing with a fluorocarbon leader personally me like i said i like to use just straight up fluorocarbon because it really doesn't bother me too much i still have a pretty good hookup ratio with it so, yeah, that's what I like to do. Uh, some people like to use mono. Don't really know why, but honestly, if you're going to pick one, do fluorocarbon or braid. So, for hooks I like to use, I like to use the Gamakatsu uh, B10S Stinger Hooks in the one knot size. You guys can see that right there. These are some pretty cheap hooks. They're very, very sharp. Uh, this packet right here cost me... About eight dollars from Bass Pro, eight nine dollars. I can't remember, but it was pretty cheap. And there's 25 in that packet, and they are some of the sharpest hooks. Now, some people like to use like a uh, more octopus style hooks, but personally, I have such a good hook set with these that it doesn't even like really cross my mind to use a smaller hook. And I get quite a few bites on the wacky rig. I haven't really got to throw it much recently, but now that the water has warmed up and spring's finally here, I'm going to be using it a lot more compared to like the Ned Rig that I'm normally using. But that's for another video. So, yeah. Those hooks, if you don't have any, just get a 5-pack and try it out. I promise you'll love them. So, some people like to use weedless options with their hooks. And personally with me, I like to keep mine uh, non-weedless because I think it affects my hookup ratio and if you have a lot of grass near where you're at it might be useful to look into it but personally me I do not like to use 
like weedless white hero coats because it's just it's something about it that just makes me feel like I miss a lot more hood sets but go out give it a shot try both see what you like personally and go from there and that's all you can really do so there's a wacky rig tool that you can get if you are completely new to wacky rigging and you can use o-rings to basically hook your worm on to your hook without having to actually go into the worm with the hook and some people like to use o-rings personally me i love to use o-rings but i also know a lot of people who say that o-rings affect their hookup ratio so it's really up to you i've also heard of people using two o-ring hooks to make sure that their hook stays on there straight on the wacky ring personally i just use one i just like to keep it in there and sometimes like if i'm fishing like where i think i'm gonna lose my worm i will hook in to the worm and still use the o-ring but it's just a personal preference, so it's up to you, really. So, what type of color worms do I like to use whenever I'm fishing in the wacky rig? And honestly, it really depends on your water clarity and where you're fishing that day. So, if you are in, like, crystal clear water, you're probably going to want to stick with more natural colors, like a uh, green pumpkin, for example. Or a uh, baby bass, or summer crawl, anything like that that you can think of that is super natural. Use that. And something that'll match the hatch in your lake, that'll be good too. Um, now, with dirty or stained water, you're probably gonna want to use darker colors with uh, bigger profiles. And you can use like a black and blue, and June Bug is also another amazing color. And yeah, I mean, you can also use like black and red flay. Um, anything that will just really stand out to the bass to where they're like, huh. You know what I really want that and that's all you need so some different soft plastic brands I like to use is the Gookin Squad Bunker Logs it's one of my favorites to throw I also like the Gam Gary Yamamoto uh, Cinco's can never go wrong with those personally I switch between the two of those quite a bit they're pretty similar it uh, just kind of depends on what the fish is one that day and if I want to give it a little bit extra pizzazz, I like to go with the Exo Ribbon by Biospawn. And it just has like a pretty awesome action whenever you're wacky rigging it. So you can pretty much wacky rig anything you want, any soft plastic. Personally, a lot of people use worms. Uh, it's really just kind of up to you. Biospawn exoswims are also another really good one. Personally, I don't use them too much, but I know a lot of people who do. And yeah, it will honestly benefit you to just try different worms until you find what's right for you. Because personally, I use these quite a bit here. So yeah, just give it a shot, see what uh, you like. And also one thing I want to add about the different types of worms I like to use. Um, personally, if you're fishing for smallmouth, I would recommend using a four inch. Most of the ones I use are five inch worms, but whenever I'm fishing for smallmouth, I notice I have more luck with four inch worms because that's kind of a slightly smaller profile and the smallmouth just eat it up. So if you fish for a lot of smallmouth, think about downsizing. And, I mean, if you're wanting to target big ones, still, I throw big worms for them. Um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys how to rig up the wacky rig with a hook and an o-ring. So how I like to do this is I like to get this end right here first. And I like to slip this right down through here. Sorry if it's blurry. And you want to get it to about the middle right here and then you come behind with your hook if I can get a hold of it you set that right here and you just roll that band up onto it and there you go you might have to readjust it a little bit but boom you got your wife rigged all rigged up 
And that's how you do it with the O-ring. Now I'm going to show you how to do it without the O-ring. Alright guys, so how you should rig this up without an O-ring is you want to come in here and you want to kind of angle it down and go about halfway. And then you want to come back up the middle of the bait here. And there you go. You got yourself a wacky rig. And personally, it doesn't really matter how you do it. Some people put like an O-ring on this too. Even if they skin hook it. It's personal preference. So give it a shot. See which one you like more. Let me know down below. You should fish the wacky rig pretty much anywhere you want, but the best places to fish them are under docks. Like if you can skip it up under a dock, chances are you're probably going to get a fish. Because bass, during especially the warmer months, they love to hide up under docks. And bass relate a lot to structure, and that is such a good spot for a big bass to hide. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've used a wacky rig near a dock and just absolutely caught a behemoth. Also, other good places to fish it is on, like, weed lines or grass. That's always a pretty good option. I also like to fish it around rocks. But that's just me. And anywhere super shallow, I will fish it. So, if you guys see any place where you think a wacky rig would do good, throw it. And also, even if they are suspended... This is a deadly bait because of how slow it falls because it's completely weightless. So give it a shot whenever a fish is suspended and you just can't get anything else to work. I guarantee the wacky rig would work for you. Laydowns are also another good spot because bass generally like to stick to structure of any type or transitions. So laydowns are a phenomenal place, especially if you just kind of let it sit there or if you let it flow into the laydown you will probably get bit. So go out and try these things. Thank you so much guys for watching today. And if you guys have any tutorial videos you would like for me to do in the future, leave a comment down below. And also tell me if you've had any success on the Wacky Rig and what your personal best on the Wacky Rig is. And if you guys haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe for more fishing content. We post three times a week every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And also follow us on Instagram. I will link all the stuff I talked about in the video today down below in the description. And with all of uh, our social medias that we use so you guys can find us again. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And go out and catch you some big fish, guys. See you next time.